And welcome inside our NHL and NBC studio. Liam and Q, Keith Jones and Anson Carter. This is Quest for the Cup brought to you by Duncan. Where there's hockey, there's Duncan. Let's begin with the Blue Jackets and the Bruins. Columbus leads the series two games to one. They had a crazy crowd in game three. Sergei Bobrovsky came up big. Matt Duchesne now has game winners in back-to-back -back games. What is he showing you in the playoffs? He can be a go-to player for a good Columbus Blue Jackets team, especially in the power play. He's been outstanding, making that net front presence, going to the tough, high-traffic areas against players a lot bigger than he is. And he's able to do that because he's got the hockey sense to time it just perfectly. Columbus Blue Jackets now have a shooting mentality in their power play. They operate the umbrella up top with Seth Jones and Panarin Wierenski on each side, and they're just getting pucks in that. They're not wasting any time firing pucks at the blue paint, and Matt Duchesne's using his quickness to get those loose pucks and put them home. Bruins looking for answers. They look right at the top. Star players, top line guys. What is going on? It's great coverage from the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's frustration starting to seep into the game of the Bruins' top players, and they've got to get rid of that frustration in a hurry. Not an easy thing to do against this Jackets team. Savard has been very physical. Jones has been just brilliant defensively. And Bobrovsky has made some big saves on Bergeron along the way. Pasternak has had a very difficult series. He's taken a lot of hits. He's been knocked down numerous times. His speed game has been ineffective. Marchand's been uh, taking some ill-advised penalties along the way, arguing with the officials to no avail and being in the box while Columbus has scored goals. Matt Duchesne again picking up that power play goal. Marchand heads off the ice. They've got to be a lot better, a lot more disciplined, and their top guys need to stay out of the box. You've got to play the game in between the whistles. Brad Marchand's not going to do any good doing stuff like this after the play. Punches Harrington in the back of the net. The cameras will catch you every single time there, Brad. you got to be smart, you got to be effective, and be the elite level hockey player you know that you're capable of being. Not going to be suspended for that play, but how does Columbus respond? I ignore it, and don't make him a focus point. Just continue to ignore him, which they have done for the most part. They've defended him well, played it between the whistles, and not gotten involved with him after the whistles. All right, let's bring it to the West. You have the Sharks leading the Avs two games to one. Logan Couture comes up with his first career playoff hat trick. His coach, Pete DeBoer, says he is just that guy. It's in his DNA. He can elevate in these moments. What is it about him that makes him so good in playoff hockey? You, know, you watch him, and there's nothing special about his game. He's not a fast skater. He doesn't have a can of a shot. He's not huge. He's a complete hockey player. And a lot of times, he's that forgotten superstar in that San Jose Sharks team that has Carlson, Burns, Joe Thornton, Pavelski. But he elevates his game, and he put a lot of pressure on himself to add more offense. Now the Pavelski is not in the lineup, and he did just that in the last game. Love the gamesmanship. I love the post-goal celebration. I love the tenacity he plays with Jonesy. But more than anything, I like that skill level, his ability to elevate at the big moments in hockey games. Yeah, and reliable player defensively out there with the goaltender pulled, defending the lead, ends up picking up an empty, an empty net goal to get the hat trick. All good things from Logan Couture, and now a very confident player as this series moves along. There's star power, of course, on the other side. Nathan McKinnon is one of the best young players in the world. Can the Avs ask anything more of him at this point? They can't, and you have to expect him to continue doing what he's doing. He scored a big goal in the last game. He's got points in seven consecutive games, and he is a threat every time he steps on the ice. He's hopping all over the place. I mean, he is generating scoring chances. Mark Edward Vlasic has done a very good job in trying to keep him off the score sheet. Easier said than done. He does pick up an empty net goal here and scored a nice goal in the uh, game three when he snapped one home, doing a terrific job and getting some open space for himself, but he's got to go through a lot of teal jerseys to get it. Yeah, if anything, Coach Bednar could probably try to get him away with that last change at home, get him away from Vlasic and Burns. But when he puts them together with Ranton and Landeskog, that trio is put together to try to generate offense, try to be difference makers in the game. So look for Bednar to go to that combination a lot more frequently to try to get this Avalanche team back in this series. Abs have enough depth to get past the Sharks? They do. I think there's enough there. I think splitting up the top line is probably the best way to do that. Ranton can also uh, show him that he can play without the two big gunners as well. Special teams, of course, are going to be together. But at even strength, I think it's a pretty good idea to keep them separated. And I think with a healthy or healthier Eric Carlson now, I think it's be very tough. If Eric Carlson was laboring a little bit in that last series, maybe not. But I've seen enough the last couple games where he's skating, his explosiveness is back. I'm not quite sure if the Avs have enough to overcome the San Jose Sharks. All right, we are well into the second round. A reminder that every game can be seen on the networks of NBC Universal.